Previously on the Guru Brew, I picked up this desktop drum set from Five Below and see if we can't make a MIDI drum set out of this. So here's the circuit that I built for it, very simple. I've got a MIDI connection here so that I can plug it into my MIDI converter. It's got a pretty good sound to it, doesn't it? I found these Wii drums for Guitar Hero at a thrift store. They were only five bucks and I thought I'd go ahead and turn them into MIDI so I could jam on them just like a real drum set. Let's get started. It's time to take the Atomega CPU chip out of our Uno and transplant it. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver and carefully prise it out of here. There we go. There we go. I think I'm ready to try it out. Getting excited. Hey, I got a working breadboard. Now I want to take all these parts and put them on here for permanent installation now that I know this works. So this is quite a bit smaller, but I think it'll work just fine. And I'll just do point to point with wires. Okay, I need to get all that stuff on this little tiny board. think I've just about got it. Yeah, it's a little messy on this side, but hey, we're not going to see it again anyway. So I just have to put a couple more wires um, for the port here, and that'll be located on the actual drum set, because there's already a port there. And then my power will come down on these pins, and then I provided these uh, 12 pins here for six sensors. It'll be five drums plus um, a foot switch for a bass drum. Yep. So I just need to check my work, put that uh, chip on there, and get it installed. So this little thing is going to take the place of these two big things. And I won't have to put my Arduino inside the drum set, and I can use it for something else. It's time to put the brain in. Something very satisfying about doing this. Is it alive? We shall see. You're going to be electrified. Let's take a closer look at this drum pad. Very simple, really. 
the piezos are just connected to the bottom of the drum and you can see them as plain as day and they look a lot like the ones that we purchased they look exactly like it they have some white glue on them so the wires won't rip free and there's two leads coming off each of them so there's one two three there's one up here it goes through there for the symbol and the other symbols here and all the wires plug in here so there's one two three four five connections and there's one two three four five drums now this also has a spot in this connector for a for a foot pedal so you have like a kick drum that you can use and there's also a power supply port and a MIDI port now this isn't MIDI MIDI this is something that they use for the game so it didn't help us but instead of running my own jacks I think I can just take this little board off and break into it and uh, just use these connectors and I won't be needing this board so yeah very simple very very simple and this is the mechanism that lets the symbols up and down so anyway I'll take this off and then I'll take this off as well and I'll hack into that and I've got the pins that I put on my board these little pins here and I should be able to just plug in all my drums all my different sensors right into this see how it goes So I want to mount my little board that I made somewhere in here because all these wires come together and then the, also the plug for the externals over there. But uh, I think I'm going to have to make up a mount or just glue it in or something. Here's the original mounts here. This board used to sit on here just like that. And I could do that, but I think my regulator is sticking up there too high. Look at that. For now, I could just uh, put it right there, and then if I need to bend this down, I, I could I could do that. So maybe I'll just take a screw for now. Let's see here. I can get one screw on it anyway. Just put it right here. It almost fits diagonal. Look at that. Just about. The screw misses. That might be okay. I'm pretty sure the cover is going to hit that though. It's very thin. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. I'm going to start plugging these in. And another thing that I did is, see how close all these pins are together? Here, let me zoom you in. These are the pins that I made so that I could plug in these drums. And these are two pin, but they have these big cases on it. And when I plug these in, they're going to hog up too much real estate, so I won't be able to get the next one in. So I'm going to have to pull these pins out, and then maybe they'll fit on. Little problems. This is the little panel that goes on the back. And I'm going to reuse this. I can use it for a foot switch, power, and the MIDI out. So I'm just going to 
desolder this and then use my multimeter and figure out what pins I need and hook them in. There we go. I've got the connections on, all sorted out. Let's put it back together. Almost ready. Oh, I'm getting excited. Is it going to blow? Is it going to smoke? Or is it just going to work? I think I'm going to break that stud out of there and let the board sit down flush with this. Maybe glue it in. So I'm going to break that out of there, I think. What do you think? That way I can just put it right down in that little hole. And then I think it'll clear. So the good news is it fits down in here now. And I didn't put any screws in, but I took it in to test. And it works, but the sensitivity is very low. I had to really beat on them. And I think I know what's wrong. I think it's those resistors are the wrong ones. Um, I got these in a kit from China. I think they were mislabeled. I'll check them out and let you know. My fault. I used the wrong resistors. Those are 10K resistors and I should have used one mega ohm. So, I used those blue ones out of a kit that I had laying around instead of these type that I ran out of. And these have the color coding different than these. And I just made a mistake. So I have to cut those out of there and put these in. I've been asking the comments how it's going with my new soldering iron, my 936 clone. And I bought these generic tips. And I recommend you get the Haco tips if you're going to buy the soldering iron because I have been burning through these tips and they're probably not as good as the Haco brand I mean they work but uh, you know when you get a set like this they're cheap enough but you only get a couple of them you can really use I mean I'll probably never use some of these in there like that chisel one so anyway you might be better off just buying the Haco brand tips I hear that they fit this iron just fine other than that I really like the iron itself Okay, minor setback. I changed those resistors. It's time to close it back up and try it again. So, I plugged it in and it started giving fault signals, a constant signal. And I traced it down to this symbol. And here's the plug. It was just dry rotted. There's a wire that comes up from this post and goes into the control panel. And it plugs in to this pad here there's one on each side and the other one's not much better but it's not faulting right now so anyway this was contacting within so I'm going to take an old wire right here and rig this one up and run a new cable it's just what age does to these that didn't fare well at all did it anyway I'll continue this one's not going so smooth is it I just took the wire out and look look at the wire. That's not in real good shape either. Must have just used the cheapest stuff possible. This wasn't even rubbing on anything. This was just one of the wires in here. It's coated with something that's just falling apart. So you might have to change your wires out if you're going to do this. I'm just going to change one for now. I think the rest is fine. And it's just the ones that go up to the symbol. Look how much thicker this wire is that I'm replacing it with. This is the original and this is my replacement. So these ought to be good. This is just an old like headphone thing I took apart. Anyway, back to it. <laughs> Bye. 
Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.